embrace the history of marriage as becoming the central issue in LGBT politics in the contemporary moment by tracing money, right? I think it was a very few people that um, intentionally decided that that was going to be the issue that the kind of alleged collective community is going to work on. Because the AIDS crisis, you know, hit white gay men um, in pretty profound ways, I think that that actually brought a lot of people into um, kind of advocacy and activism um, who would who were not progressive politically and who um, otherwise would not have become mobilized. A lot of those folks, um, if they died, left great amounts of wealth and resources to particular kinds of um, gay organizations. A lot of that money and resources started to pull out of HIV AIDS and into other kinds of like gay advocacy, right? Which then became conferred around kind of inclusion of, you know, gay white men essentially into uh, a kind of full white male citizenship, right? So that's why we saw, you know, um, access to serving in the military, same-sex marriage, hate crimes inclusion, and employment non-discrimination as like the sort of four pillars of gay equality. A new sort of gay lobby had come, you know, of age in some respect because of, of the AIDS crisis. Of course, one way that we can understand how marriage has come to in some ways really define what gay rights have meant in the last 10 or so years um, is because of the role of large, well-resourced, mainstream LGBT organizations that have poured tons of money into, um, into, into campaigns for um, quote-unquote marriage equality. So I think that's one piece of it. Um, I think it's complicated because there also has been, um, we know, <clears throat> right-wing efforts against, you know, uh, sort of preemptive moves against gay marriage. Um, and so some of the work has been a response to that, right, sort of to challenge the homophobia of those campaigns. A huge amount of resources, money, communication-based um, resources, media-based resources have really gone into the marriage fight and have made it kind of the defining conversation of the LGBT movement in mainstream culture. Um, so. Uh, what that means is that organizations that are working around issues of um, uh, kind of changing the material conditions that LGBT folks are living in are really diminished if they're not participating in this marriage fight. It has diverted money from actual projects of social justice like prison abolition, um, like housing. Uh, it's absorbed money and energies um, and it has presented a view to um, uh, to the, to the sort of people not part of those movements, that this is how we think about what queer people need, you know? So it's narrowed like our ability to communicate about what we actually want for our communities um, and crowded all that stuff out, all while building up a, a really powerful structure that does a lot of harm to lots of people. And I think I want that harm to be the center of the analysis, not the rewards that some people will be able to access.